Cloud Customer Success Team office hours. Uh, today, uh, we have not a lot of content per se. It is Thanksgiving week. I got uh, Brad on the line with me here. Do you want to introduce yourself, Brad, so, uh, so everybody out there can know who you are? Sure. I'm getting an ad on Twitch. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Brad Ingstrom. I'm a product marketing manager in uh, Australia. So, uh, I mean, that's something interesting to talk about. So, we just kind of launched in Australia. Uh, how has that been going out there? Getting a lot of uptake? Anything going out that way yet? Uh, yeah, well, actually, it's, you know, dealing with all the pent-up demand. Um, so, we had a lot of people waiting for it to show up here. And so, now they're actually getting through their initial deployments and then working on scaling and doing all the design work that they have to do to, to get those working. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, the only caveat, I guess, in Australia, there's only two availability zones. Is that correct? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, so it's one of the things I know that, that Amazon's working on because uh, that does inhibit our use of stretch clusters, which is kind of uh, disappointing, um, but yeah. uh, something to be noted out there for uh, I mean I guess this this uh, this stream and this time is actually for APJ viewers anyway so I guess it's good for them to yeah. know out the gate right now that that's that's not something that's available uh, today and I don't know how when that would be on the roadmap um, mostly mostly because we need the third availability zone for the vSAN witness is the uh, is the issue we have yeah right so uh, either we have to look at hosting that somewhere completely separate which can have some performance implications, uh, or yeah, I'm not sure what we'll do about that one. But uh, to be honest, we have we have quite a few videos on uh, the stretch cluster stuff, and while they're a fancy feature, I don't really recommend them to everybody. There is a little enhanced cost. There's some performance implications, and um, it's great if you have those kind of apps and you need that that traditional or I guess traditional apps and you need a highly available, it's great for that. But uh, uh, a regular SDDC, and again, it's no uh, replacement for disaster recovery, which I find most people are using it for, which uh, is not something they should be doing. All right, yeah. So where, where are you based out in Australia? Uh, based in Sydney. Oh, you're based in Sydney? I've been out yeah. there a couple times. I need to try to figure out a way to get out there again. Uh, I love that place. Uh, not the yeah, cheapest well, it's place. It's coming into summer, so it's a good place to be. Oh, I guess, yeah, you guys are just coming into summer. I guess pretty hot there in the summer, doesn't it? Uh, it depends where you are. <laughs> well, as a, as a Canadian that uh, is now located in the U.S., uh, everything above 25 Celsius is hot to me. Right. <laughs> so in that case, that would probably be hot. <coughs> So uh, one thing we're doing here on the stream uh, is I'm, I'm playing around with our log intelligence connector. To be honest, I don't know if this is going to work in our OneNote SDC. Uh, I've just kind of been playing around with it. Uh, today I was actually doing some a uh, little bit of migration testing, uh, which I guess I could show off right now as well. I've actually created this VM. And um, as you can see here, we've actually, and unfortunately I can't make this window bigger for some reason, but uh, you can see here that we actually have hybrid link mode configured for this uh, this SDDC so this is our uh, customer successes uh, hardware lab so we actually have a lab in, in one of the VMware data centers so that we can test exactly things like this where we have it paired via the uh, cloud gateway appliance to our SDDC uh, one of the new ones running in SXT uh, that we've been doing some testing on uh, so we paired that today and I've actually been uh, uh, was playing around with some of the settings and stuff and, and making sure that this works but it's uh this is how easy it is to move stuff back and forth now now the reason i'm not doing this live is because uh, i don't have the stretch layer 2 stuff configured right yet so that's uh right. that's on me um but you know for people that are just wanting to even move cold workloads it's it's you can, you'll watch it kind of go through things it'll do is all of its compatibility checks and I'll, I'll move it off of the cloud to on-prem and then i'll move it back as you can see, we're good VMware people here. We're using all v vSAN across the board. I'll pick a lab and mid VM, sure. Let's pick a network. V 
you land 1050, which is one of our turn on our compatibility warnings. Okay, well, let's see what happens. So this is uh, the SDC we have on the uh, VMware cloud side is a one node. Uh, we have several one nodes configured for testing. We're, we're probably going to be doing, uh, I don't know, Brad, you've been on some of those messages, but we're probably going to be merging our SDC with our engineering team's um, SDC so we can have a little bit more um, uh, capacity because we, we really, you know, I, I'm a big proponent of having at least a four node or I guess a three node out so that our, we can test stuff that's very similar to our, our customers. There's some some differences with the one node. Obviously, we don't have all the vSAN storage profile settings and right. DRS settings and, and, and all of those other caveats that, that we can't we can't really test on a one node because there's there's vSAN, but it's just a data store. It's it's not, you know. No, I can't raid five a one node. Actually, that's a good question. Would it let me create a storage profile for it? Probably. What do you use for your on-prem site? You just have a server under your desk or something? No, actually, this is in a VMware data center. So this is All actually right, okay. hardware that's uh, managed by our, our VMware data center guys. So this is actually in our Wenatchee data center. So um, I think they're a right. little bit older. Well, we set these up a year ago. So they're a little bit little bit older. We actually are going to be going through, a, and, and this is a good thing to demonstrate too. So we are moving this to a 6.5 um, host uh, and we're running, uh, you know, if you look at it in here, I think it actually says 6.8 for the host. Yeah, so it says 6.81. So VMware Cloud, like we've talked about many times before, runs the latest and greatest of all of our code. Um, so we're kind of, I guess, a little version ahead, a minor version ahead of what's available right. on-prem. Uh, but you can see that we're uh, moving that VM between our 6.5 and our, our 6.8 host. We are looking at upgrading our lab to 6.7 here shortly. But that's all a bunch of work that none of us want to do. See, this is this is this is how VMware Cloud has spoiled us because now when we want to do testing on anything vSphere, I spin up an SDDC. It's yeah. easy. It, it comes up in a couple hours. I can test away, blow it up. You know, I could actually blow it up and then delete it and then restart again. Whereas the hardware lab, the actual physical lab, is actually kind of a pain in the butt to go around and update everything and make sure all of our firmware is right and uh, so I, I think I think Michael Kolos actually wrote a blog on this on the uh, cloud.vmware.com website there for people to go check out about that very thing about you know why why would you want to manage kind of a, a lab somewhere and and have to deal with all that as opposed to just make it our problem. Right. And, and, yeah. You know, we we update everything. We fix all the hardware. Um, and 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 and. You know, we, we are a testament to uh, everything kind of gets out of date because uh, no, it's nobody's job to kind of maintain the lab. Um, so uh, we're, we're kind of our own best example here for, for what VMware Cloud offers. So I'm not actually sure what's taking so long on the really good keating this virtual machine. It was actually a lot faster earlier. And as I said, that it going up 1%, but it's probably because I'm also importing a OVF package. So uh, the, on, the, on the customer side, when they deploy HCX there and on the customer side, are they generally using you guys for help or are they able to do that on their own? So uh, a couple of things. So this this is an HX. We can show HX. Um, it's a pretty even split. Uh, there are uh, quite a few customers that have just gotten HCX up and running themselves and went and rolled with it. Uh, where we usually come in to help is uh, the bigger customers, where they have kind of more complex networking needs and uh, you know moving a lot of virtual machines kind of thing where there's a little bit more complexity to it. That's that's kind of where we jump in a little bit more. Um, but uh, but we're available. I mean, our, our chat, I mean, if I was, uh, so this is an RDP window here, but if I was in our VMware cloud and I was just kind of messing around with this earlier, I, I could I could bog somebody right now to help me out. Yeah. And let's, yeah. let's see who's available for conversation. Oh, I could bug David or Rohit or Deepak. Okay. I could go say hi to them, and they'd probably say hi back, but they're, they might be busy with other stuff, so I'll try not to bother them. But 
uh, if you have issues with any of the HCX stuff, uh, which is right in here, we have a number of this deployed. Just hit that chat function. Gets them on. If it gets uh, to be a little bit more technical, architectural conversation, the CSE team will bring us in and, and we'll kind of have that conversation with them. No, oh, we actually have this deployed in here. So uh, uh, the other thing with this is... Uh, we all kick out our own SDCs and configure a bunch of stuff, and then we lose track of it. So uh, there's always, there's always something fun in here that we haven't. Uh, anyway, on a spell. Oh, so our mi migrate test worked, uh, which is odd that it hasn't updated on my other screen. I probably just need to do a refresh here. Yeah. Okay. That's done. So now you can actually see that my migrate test is now in my on-prem. All right. So this is a nice small virtual machine, you know, the, your results may vary in timelines, um, but I can go ahead and just toss this back. And again, you can see both of my V centers here and I can. Now, one thing that always gets people um, in terms of using the services is people have a tendency to always click this, you know, the cluster uh, or even the host, uh, which and then and the way that we do our permissions in VMware Cloud you can see that that's blocked. You, you, what I tell people is kind of think of your the compute resource pool as your new uh, data center level. So that's that's the toppest most level that you can assign permissions or create VMs or or any of those kinds of things. Um, so we've had a couple people that kind of hit that. And pick our workload data store. See, so and again here, if I try to do it into that folder, it's not going to let me. So I just put the workloads folder. And let's pick a network. Let's actually hit browse. So uh, another note is, is a, they only display, I think it was seven uh, networks in there. If you hit the browse button, you get uh, quite a few more up there. So I'm just going to pick, yeah, that guy, sure. And yeah, does a little validation. Hit next and hit finish. And away it goes. And yeah, significantly faster this time. So now, like I said, I'm kind of uh, playing around with the log intelligence. So uh, that's something that's, that's uh, that must be a VPN problem. So well, that's one of the things that uh, has come up recently that's available to everybody is, is there is a free version of log intelligence that is bundled with VMware Cloud, uh, which is... Uh, uh, something that's really kind of cool for for, uh, for customers. It's, it's kind of bundled up. They only get one terabyte worth of logs a day, I think, and it's only um, audit logs uh, for the free version. Uh, but it at least gives you some of that stuff for compliance. And then, of course, you can pay for the uh, for this. This is our, you know, for people that don't know log intelligence, it's log insight, but our, our SaaS offering, our, our software as a service. Yeah. Uh, which again, oh, to that's be that's running on Amazon native. Yes, that's that's running on Amazon native, uh, and and that's kind of another one of the beauties of of the software as a service thing that I tell all of our customers as well is, uh, a lot of people come up and say, well, I mean, the log intelligence is really big. It's you know, how do I size it? How do I figure out all the, you know, what do I need to do and stuff? And again, make it our problem. Sign up for the service. You know, we worry about the background storage. We make sure that you know we get the resources you need. Um, and, and that's another big one, actually, for uh, if you were to go back here for um, what we're calling now cloud assembly, which is basically VRA in the cloud. So I, I, I once upon a time spent a lifetime, uh, what felt like a lifetime anyway, uh, training, uh, essentially training, uh, both our field staff and our partners and, uh, and something we called live fire training, which is kind of expert to expert training. And one of the sessions we did was essentially just installing VRA. Uh, and I think anybody can tell you, it's gotten a lot better. Uh, you know, don't get me wrong, it's gotten a lot better. But the, the amount of thinking that had to go into properly sizing, do I go, you know, the highly available, you know, distri distributed install, or do I go the simple one? And uh, now all that's our problem. You, know, you just come in here and you start clicking away. And uh, once you get a project going, you can start deploying blueprints. Uh, and this will deploy to, I think if you look here, uh, we have our AWS uh, regions all set up, so you can deploy this to AWS right away. Uh, I can add in our, um, I wonder if I could do that actually. 
uh, I can we can add in our uh, our VMC. Uh, as you can see here, one of the guys on our team, Persona, that you've probably seen, has uh, gone and created our uh, cloud zones for uh, AWS. So uh, really easy to start deploying stuff uh, right off the hop. And so the yeah, go head ahead. end part of it of the SaaS service runs in the same region as the VMC or does it have to be pre-provisioned or does it get instantiated with the first customer to sign up? Uh, I don't believe that th this runs necessarily in the same AZ. Uh, it's run in the same region uh, as, as right. all of yeah. the customers. And I believe that we have those all already set up, ready to go. So I don't think that it, there's a waiting to for, for anybody to Okay. Set up yeah. for the first time. We have this all kind of all pre-populated. Um, and I can try to play around the later. How the H6 flick is not working. That's... So I haven't played around too much with this one, so it's uh, there's probably a little documentation I need to read on that. Um, but uh, as you can see now, our I have moved our virtual machine is now back in the cloud. So... Uh, nice and easy back and forth. And I'm wondering if this... So I don't know how I did the networking for this uh, log intelligence thing. So this, this might not work. That's just something I was kind of playing around with uh, anyway. Uh, it probably didn't power on. No, it didn't. So that could be why we can't see it. So, uh, Brad, I think you're pretty new to the the VMware cloud uh, as a service side of the house. Is that true? Uh, no. No? Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I joined VMware as part of vCloud Air. Oh, okay. I, uh, as an SE with Tom Cushing and Kevin Gorman. And uh, then went there to the BCPP and then from there to product marketing where I did the launch for the Australia region. Yeah, I know quite a few guys over in that side of the house, the VCPB side. I, I talk to Harold Simon all the time, and uh, I guess Thomas Foida. Yeah. Uh, I think Timo's over there still. Timo Sugliani. Not sure. Yeah, don't, don't yeah, he's he's in Europe. Yeah. They're on the uh, yeah. They were they were former VCloud Air network people. All right. Yeah. Uh, and then which became the VCPP program. So. And vCloud Air is still around in OVH. It's still kicking. Uh, no, uh, more than that, we actually still have a, a, an instance here. Oh, do you? You still actually have a, a branded have vCloud Air? one on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's interesting. That's funny. Um, all right. Well, it doesn't look like any customers are joining, so I didn't have any particular questions. Um, yeah, no, like I, I said, we could. this them. might be an easy one. Um, like I said, I'm just playing around with this stuff now, and I might end it early if we don't uh, don't get anybody that comes in. But uh, at least down right. with a little bit of stuff, and and uh, I would appreciate you dropping in and giving someone to, to chat with at least, so I'm not here sitting here just talking to myself. <laughs> just talking to yourself. Which has happened before. I think the, I did the last I did the webinar last week. Um, so the webinars are a little bit more uh, attentive because we we send out an email blast and we do a, a formal Zoom type thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that one I was talking about their use cases and architectures, and, and we had quite a few, uh, quite a few people in there. But it was basically just me talking. Uh, thankfully, some people asked some questions, so it you know felt like I was talking to somebody else, uh, but but not really. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, and and it's a slow week. Uh, usually, we have a couple more members of my team. Uh, usually, Michael and Z uh, drop in for sure. And, we get a little bit of yeah. banter going and, you know, kind of what we've seen the last few weeks and and, and stuff people are hitting, um, you know, but uh, everybody's on vacation this week because it's American Thanksgiving coming up. Yeah, so, I can imagine. So every, everybody's, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a slow week and a hectic week. It's slow from an email and Slack perspective, but uh, customers are still going full bore. Um, well, some customers, uh, there are a few customers that, again, they've taken off this week, so. Yeah. It's kind of nice, a little bit of a reprieve, but uh, 
Uh, one thing you might be interested in uh, that's interesting to you is, is we are uh, shortly adding vCloud director support on VMware Cloud. Yes. Um, which to me, I think, is kind of what vCloud Air should have been in the first place. I know it's probably a loaded statement. Oh, look, we learned a lot from vCloud Air. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it... Uh, yeah. It was good, and I mean, I I am a uh, a very 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 big VMware Cloud homeboy. Uh, I I loved VCD. Uh, I I like many around the company were was not necessarily enthused with the selection of uh, VRA over VCD. Um, I understand why it was done. Uh, VRA had a lot more, uh, you know, business logic and and kind of. Uh, user-friendly aspect to it where VCD was just much better as a as a cloud platform as it were um, but yeah. it was ugly as hell um, and I think that's kind of one of the problems with vCloud Air too it was ugly as hell uh, it, 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 it tried hard um, but every time it dumped you into the vCloud director interface I think 90% of kind of uh, business users out there would get completely lost so Whereas VRA is a lot easier in that regard. So I, I get where it's going, but uh, I am excited to see uh, what we can do with vCloud Director uh, on VMware Cloud. Yeah, well, we've got 300 service providers, MSPs here in Australia. Yeah, and, and then, uh, well, that was the one beauty of vCloud Director as well. Is it, 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 like I said, it was a very good cloud platform, and, and you could build whatever kind of interface you wanted to it. Uh, and a lot of our, our customers uh, in that vCloud Air network and I guess the VCPP now um, did a fantastic job of, of uh, really building a, a very good services on top of it that still exist. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it's it, and that's the beauty of it, too, is, is that all of those services can integrate with these services, which can be targets for our SaaS services. So, um, you know, it's, it's still a virtual machine running on vCloud Director, although it's a kind of a vApp construct. But... It looks slightly different, but still a virtual yep. machine. Yep, looking forward to that. Okay, well, you have a good one. Yeah, I'll let you and, go. Uh, I might uh, I might tool around here a little bit too, and uh, yeah, go go have some lunch. I think is uh, it's, it's lunchtime in Aussie land. Yeah, yeah. Uh, try not to fall off the planet because you're upside down. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, like I said, I'm just kind of playing around here and, and just kind of, uh, you know, seeing if I can get this log intelligence to thing to work. I, I am I am being uh, like I try to instruct our customers not to do and haven't read the documentation. Um, but uh, all this stuff is fairly intuitive. Um, and yeah, I might, uh, I might just play around. If there's anybody got any questions or comments or anything that they want to see uh, in the interface or... See if I can blow up something. Um, like I said, this is running our, you know, the newest NSXT bits. Uh, we actually have a Direct Connect uh, configured as well uh, to our VMware data center, uh, where is our, where this is running, um, so we can do a whole bunch of our, our tests across uh, uh, physical to the SDDC, and uh, you know it's. Uh, we're always have we're always having fun in. in oh, my block comes block. We always have fun in customer success. Uh, uh, you know things have been changing. Um, but like I said in my my last webinar, if you guys haven't made it, uh, we do have a new best practices recommendation of keeping cluster sizes to sixteen. Uh, we understand that. You know we we talked about thirty two before, and, and vSphere itself is capable of uh, sixty four, uh, but uh, uh, we have made the decision that uh, there is some some better stuff to uh, to do um, in terms of uh, uh, get better performance a little bit more stable um, I don't want to say better performance uh, it's I don't want to say it's more stable I guess I said everything wrong in that sentence um, it's just something that we have validated that works uh, to our standard uh, and, and not to say that if you go above that things are going to break or anything like that you know, but this is what best practices are. Do you need to sign them for best practices? And that's what the target should be. If you need to violate that, go to 20 hosts or something. That's something that definitely we can discuss. Uh, we're in some conversations with some of our other customers around increasing the size of that 16 node. But, 
you know, we, we got, again, it's the 80 20 rule. Um, so if people violate that, that happens. Um, but now with multiple clusters, uh, you can just kick out another cluster. Uh, I, I can't demonstrate that right now because you can't kick out multiple clusters within a uh, one node SDDC. Um, but yeah, so uh, like I said, there's not, not really too much going on uh, today. And like I said, it's been a very slow week with. Um, uh, with uh, the Thanksgiving coming up, uh, another thing that's, that's interesting to note is is that uh, to kind of get a version, to, to get the, uh, the advantages of that a hybrid link mode with the cloud gateway, it is the on-prem. Um, and you can actually see this is actually our gateway appliance uh, you connect to to see both of these data centers, um, which is you know I, I hate the term single point of glass, single pane of glass. But this this allows you to. Um, set up a now this is another thing that, that we've discussed uh, recently um and it, and it actually boils to not just hybrid link mode um, but to hcx as well so we, we're we're we've come up with the concept and again talking about little best practices of what we call a migration cluster uh, or what we're, we're thinking about calling a migration cluster again this is something that we're just fleshing out right now because there is a a, a decent amount of overhead that goes into uh, the hcx appliances um when migrating workloads over and, and a lot of the network connectivity bits and, and to try to get this to, to set up across all of the vCenters in your uh, on-prem environment uh, can get quickly overwhelming. So what we're kind of you know taught, recommending now is, is to kind of create a cluster on your on-prem that you then connect uh, via HLM, uh, via HCX uh, to the SDDC and that's where you migrate to the cloud from so you internally you would kind of you know and you can live migrate internally to uh, this migration cluster and then from that migration cluster up to the to the cloud so that's that's something that's uh, relatively new and that's been a result of, of some of the stuff we're seeing with very big uh, very large migrations that we don't want to impact necessarily uh, other workloads uh, and we want to make sure that we streamline it as, as, as best as possible for both network traffic uh, bandwidth and, and latency that that seems to be that the best um, the best idea not, not the best idea but again one of the best practices we've come up with for how to, um, to 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 successfully get to the cloud and that's what customer success is about we're we're here we don't uh, anybody that knows me and, and, and knows our team knows that I don't mince words I you know I call a spade a spade uh, I call a hard art whatever for your card uh, euphemisms are but it's um, you know I'll, I will never talk into something that we know is not going to work uh, we'll never do that we're very 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 focused on ensuring that you're very successful in getting to the cloud that's why I mentioned things about Australia with you know there's you can't do the stretch clusters right now uh, I'm not in product marketing in, in any way, shape, or form, and on sales, I don't, I don't make a cut. Um, so when you talk to us and customer success, and that's the customer success managers, the customer success architect, or customer success engineer, uh, we're really in it just to get you guys successful. I don't, I don't make any money off of if you guys grow or anything like that. I feel great if you do, but it's more uh, we want to see you successful and, and driving business value out of our offerings, and uh, that's why I, I love the job I'm in. Uh, and, and thankfully, my manager uh, puts up with my style, um, and, uh, and we've seen a lot of successes in, in VMware Cloud, and uh, it's been quite good. So I might have to do some networking stuff on our log intelligence end here to uh, to get it all to spin up, because uh, I wasn't I wasn't the guy that set up all the networking, so uh, I'm not exactly sure. And I'll, I'll throw Z under the bus because he's on vacation. Um, that uh, I'll work on that for next time. I think we're going to have a log intelligence one coming up. So uh, anyway, I, th I think I'll probably wind it up here. I think uh, we have kind of a few people watching. Um, if they have any questions, feel sure to fire them. But, uh, you know, we talked about a few things today. We migrated a, a VM up and, and down. And um, like I said, a slow, a little bit of a slow week this week. So I think we'll, we'll kind of, you know, keep it to this half hour this time uh, next week uh, we're going to have Paige Clapper uh, take us through uh, vSphere App Defense Platinum uh, so vSphere Platinum is the new uh, is the new licensing uh, level it's a, the top level of our licensing which now includes App Defense so she's going to take us through the 
Uh, she, we've already made some, uh, done some content, but as, as we know, that was like six, eight months ago, which is you know a lifetime in in uh, cloud terms. So uh, she's going to come over, you know, come on and and, and demonstrate uh, how the aft defense works, what you get with the vSphere Platinum, and answer any questions around aft defense. It's a very kind of hot topic. We've talked about a lot at uh, our VMworld keynotes. Uh, very cool product, kind of rethinking the way we do security. Uh, it's a incredibly developing product. Its updates are fast and furious, just like the, the updates that we have. And so features and functionalities are coming, uh, you know, quickly, quickly, quickly. And it's really becoming quite a very um, uh, interesting security offering uh, that we're seeing a lot of our customers adopt. And we're, we're expecting a lot of uptake from it as well. Um, as the, the product continues to grow and we, we get uh, into the marketplace a little bit more. So that's uh, that's next week, and then uh, then we'll have another office hours, and, and hopefully we'll have some more people on, and, and uh, you know, it was great to have somebody drop by today, and uh, we can talk about some more things. And, and in the meantime, feel free to everybody to, to tweet at us. Uh, also, one thing that I could actually probably mention today that is new is we do have, and I'm just trying to find it right now, we do have an email address where you can email us directly uh, any questions. So if you don't want to, you know, tweet it, obviously, or, uh, and you know, I don't want to give everybody my personal email. It's, it's tough enough to keep up with it as it is. And um, sorry, I'm just trying to find the email address right now. Uh, so we did set up, a, a like I said, a new email um, for everybody to get into. And like I said, my email has been completely overrun so let me just try to find oh here it is okay so it is cloudcs at vmware.com so it's just c-l-o-u-d-c-s at vmware.com yeah, so if you have any questions or if you have any feedback or if you have anything you want to see for next week go ahead and send that to the email uh, there's a group of us that, that monitor that email address and we'll be sure that we get to it we want to keep this very interactive uh, I know this time slot has, has been uh, not as popular as the morning time slots uh, from what we've seen but uh, we do this every week um, you know they're not like today we have great content uh, or not um, but we want to make sure that we're here for the customers if they want to come drop by and, and uh, you know ask any questions or or anything like that we're here. Uh, we want to make ourselves as, as available to, to everybody to, to, to ask questions and try to figure out what's going on with this VMware Cloud thing. And uh, so, yeah, so definitely email us at cloud, cloudcs at vmware.com. Uh, tweet at me at, at vcloudmat. Um, you know, if you're a customer, talk to your CSM or, or whatever have you. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, we're, we're here for you. We want to be very interactive and uh, we've already kind of done a couple couple episodes based upon uh, what people have asked for, and, and we'd like to continue that going forward. So with that, I think I'm going to close today, and I appreciate everybody that, that dropped by. I uh, appreciate Brad came by, and then I started a chat from, from down under to even put up with one of my corny uh, Australian jokes. Uh, I, have a whole, I have a whole bunch of them, actually, that I'll have to say for uh, maybe the next, uh, I guess it'll probably be a month from now uh, that we have our another APJ office hours. So uh, I'll keep those uh, the kangaroo jokes and the, the you know the dingoes and stuff in, in in my pocket so I can I can bring those out when when required uh, and and uh, like I said uh, join us next week next week we'll go back to our uh, EMEA uh, slash North American hours of we'll be live at 8 a.m. PST on Tuesday without defense uh, then have another webinar and then we're gonna have Aiden Dalgleish come on uh, at some point in December. Talk about some connectivity stuff and then some best practices around STDCs. Uh, we're looking at getting some partners on as well uh, through December, so that because there is a, a growing and, and well, there's already established and growing uh, partner ecosystem that um, offers you know services on top of VMware Cloud that are really interesting, really cool. Uh, so I'd like to bring some of them on and discuss some things. But I really wish uh, everybody has a, a good Thanksgiving here in the United States. Uh, happy shopping. I've already spent a large amount of money to uh, upgrade my home PC. Uh, actually switching from Intel to AMD this time. Uh, I've got a uh, fancy, fancy new processor and I've got the motherboard on order and stuff. I'm just dying to, to get her built. Um, but uh, that's the thing with when you buy online now. 
The other funny thing, which is completely unrelated to VMware stuff, but it's interesting to me how Black Friday sales now start on Monday. Uh, and not Cyber Monday, because that's the next week, Monday. But um, anyway, don't spend, don't break the bank on, on too much stuff for your, uh, your Black Friday spending, but have fun and enjoy family and some time off work, hopefully, for everybody. And everybody that's not in the U.S., uh, hopefully things slow down a little bit because all of the U.S. is off and uh, you can catch up on some stuff and, and enjoy your time off. But again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out, and uh, I will see you all next week. Thanks very much.